What happens if negative gearing gets removed in Australia? Right now, it is one of the most hot topics across all property forums, as well as the main news articles. I want you to sit back as I break this all down for you so it's made really simple to understand and why this could lead to the biggest opportunity for you as an investor. While most people are looking right, you need to look left and execute with speed. If you guys are interested in what my thoughts are, definitely keep watching. Hey guys, my name's Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, personal development and all things financial freedom. Now, if you are interested in buying property the right way and scaling up the portfolio, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below where you can book a free call with our team to discuss property, to discuss strategy and how you grow a portfolio where you can generate 100K of passive income. So I'll leave a link in the description below or you can simply search up my name or search property on Google and you'll find me there as well. So the hottest topic is negative gearing. Apparently it's gonna be abolished. The politicians have said they're not gonna to touch it. Now they're touching it and now everyone's getting a little sus. Now, if you're here for the short answer of TLDR, what does this mean? It means massive opportunity because rents are about to skyrocket. And if rents skyrocket, that plays into the whole inflation narrative, which means inflation goes up again. How can you cut rates during that time? Well, that's why we're gonna break it down. And I urge you to stay all the way through this video because there are nuggets here that will affect you in not just purchasing property today, but if you're someone who's renting property in one of these markets, you need to pay attention because it could mean big changes for you. Now, I will go on to preface this entire conversation with the fact that I personally don't think it's gonna happen. And the reason I say this is because there's been countless times where the topic of negative gearing has come up and changes or at least abolishments to negative gearing here in Australia over the last 10 to 15 years. A lot of you may not have even wanted to know about property 10 years ago, but I've been investing for about 11 years in real estate here. And I know even before I started, there were already conversations about negative gearing and how it's all gonna change. And the reality is it hasn't changed and there's a reason why. Now we will go through some data and we'll go through some real hard facts when it comes to what's happened in the past how does it actually affect the market? But I want you to get my opinion up front. Let's provide some real logic behind it and so you can understand it moving forward without all the jargon that's involved. If you think about it, negative gearing is the opposite to positive gearing. If I have negative cash flow, which essentially means the income I generate from my rent is lower than my expenses for holding that property, that could mean I've got insurances, I've got rates, council rates, water rates, as well as the biggest expense, which is my interest repayments on the mortgage. If that number is higher than the income I generate, it means it's negatively geared. It's negative cash flow. And here in Australia, the government has incentivized people to buy property and say, look, we'll help you out. You're going and buying a property, which is great for the economy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reward you by saying you can claim that as a deduction on your tax. And how this works is essentially saying that if I make 100K a year, that's my taxable income, okay? The 100K is there. But if I now have a property that is negatively geared and negative cash flow by say $10,000, the government's allowing people right now to say, well, you don't actually make 100K. You make 100K minus the 10K, which means now we're gonna tax you at 90K. That is a simplified version of how this works. Now, the positive gearing or positive cash flow is the exact opposite. If you make 100K and they tax you at 100K, then they realize, hold up, you have a property portfolio that makes you $10,000 a year. That means really you're not making 100K, you're making 110K. So we're gonna tax you on that. And straight away you're saying, well, hey, negative cash flow sounds really good because I can reduce my taxes. And this goes back to the age old argument that I have, which is don't buy property to reduce taxes, buy property to build wealth, okay? As soon as you understand that, straight away, you're gonna eliminate 90% of the choice that's out there when it comes to house and land, new house builds, off the plan properties, because they're all dog shit. What you wanna focus on is how do I build wealth? The tax benefits and everything that comes with that is all positive. That's all a bonus. Right now, I wanna focus on the best properties in the best locations to build wealth. That's what I'm doing. It's like going to the gym and saying, I wanna go and build muscle. Do you wanna build muscle or do you wanna just have a good time here? You can have a good time if you enjoy it, but your main goal is to build muscle. You wanna get fitter, you wanna reduce your body fat, that's how you wanna work. Everything else that comes with it, the relationships with people at the gym, the mindset, the dopamine hit, all of that stuff is all bonus. So if we did remove negative gearing, that means the benefit that I've just explained goes away. It means that people no longer can claim against their taxes. And the real fear here is that people think 
that if we remove this, investors have no incentive to hold the property. And to a certain extent, that's correct. Because if you simply bought the property to reduce your taxes, guess what? You're screwed. Because you might go, well, even if the property doesn't grow, I can save on my taxes because that's what I bought it for. That would eliminate so many bad operators in the space because they're basically selling you something that they know isn't gonna grow. They're just selling it to you because, hey, you can reduce your taxes. And you love that because who loves taxes? So you go, well, if I can reduce it, I'll buy the property. Most accountants go out there and tell clients the exact same thing. Buy a property, your taxes are too high. So you end up buying something new so you can get the tax depreciation, it's negatively geared because the rental yields crap, and then you say, well, it's okay, you're holding the property, it's gonna grow in capital, but from a cash flow perspective, you're saving on taxes. And that is the wrong way to be approaching this. But if we see this actually come into effect, a lot of people are gonna lose a lot of money. Because if you've gone down that strategy and bought the wrong property for the purpose of reducing your taxes, well, guess what? You now don't have the benefit of negative gearing. And that means you're now holding a property for the sake of holding a property. And now if it doesn't grow because you didn't buy for that purpose of growing, you just thought that was gonna be a bonus and it was gonna happen. Now you're holding a dud property that doesn't give you any benefits and most likely will cause you to sell. Because if you're not getting the benefits from the tax and it's not growing, why would you be holding the property? That's why if we do have this actually play out, there are so many consequences that come about of it. So number one, all of those types of properties would lose so much demand and investors would completely flee. I think that market will mean a lot of people lose money because they will really rush for the doors to try and sell and they'll sell at whatever cost. Now on the flip side, if you have property that you've bought for the purpose of building wealth, chances are within the first two to three years, you're positively geared anyway. So the TLDR is it really won't affect you. Negative gearing wasn't part of your strategy anyway. You've bought the property, it's positively geared, you're making money, and that's exactly my strategy, is buy for capital growth and buy for cash flow. Why would you now go, I wanna lose money just so I can earn some of my tax back? Because even with that concept, you're saying, I don't wanna make an extra dollar, which would be more growth, more rent. I don't wanna make an extra dollar because I don't really wanna pay 30 cents or I don't wanna pay 45 cents. But in that example, you still keep 55 cents, right? Most people are approaching this the wrong way. That's why if negative gearing is abolished, you're gonna see more demand for markets where the properties actually make sense. You will see a lot of those properties get eaten up and that's gonna drive prices up. And in the areas that we are already experiencing undersupply of properties, investors aren't gonna leave their properties. In fact, they probably will double down on those things. And that means more owner occupiers can't buy properties, which means rents will inevitably go up in those areas too. It will ultimately come down to the whole idea of undersupply, oversupply. If you have more properties to rent, you're probably gonna have a lower rent. But right now, the vacancy rates in Australia are at historic lows. And something like this, which is such a major change, could completely wipe out dynamics in certain markets and really push rental prices in other locations. Now, some investors are relying on the negative gearing to be able to go and hold that property for longer. If you realize that you'd get no benefit on the tax front, you're now finding it really difficult to hold a large portfolio. So what you could see is people that are holding multiple properties in their portfolio that are getting some of the tax back anyway, if they can no longer get that, they will now have to reduce how many properties they can hold. And this is why it's so important that you have the right strategy and the right execution. Because what is worse than buying the property is having to sell it and the transaction costs that come with it, especially if you've made no growth. Now, I do think abolishing negative gearing, although it has its pros with some people saying, well, now investors will be out, I can buy my own property. It also does mean that less housing will be built. And the reason for that is the incentive for someone to build new and get the tax benefits is really gone now. And they might say, well, what's the point of actually buying something new? I might buy something existing and developers might go, well, we have no demand, so I'm not gonna build more houses. And if you have no houses, which means incoming supply is reduced, you're gonna end up seeing prices go higher. And this is the opposite effect of what people think is gonna happen. So you've really got yourself a situation where rents will probably go higher for quality assets in quality areas and you probably have prices go higher, which means the barrier to entry is also going to go higher. Now, there are also talks about removing the 50% CGT tax benefit that people get. And what this is, is a capital gains tax that you pay on the capital gain you've made. So let's say you purchase an investment and it's gone up by $100,000. You would get 50% of that wiped away and you don't have to pay taxes on that. And that's if you hold the property for longer than 12 months and it's under your own name. 
And now, although I look like an accountant, I'm definitely not an accountant. So you'd have to speak to them specifically around your tax situation. But if they remove that, what does that look like? Well, what it could mean is that people could hold on to their properties for much longer. A lot more people will also buy their own property because on your own property, you don't have capital gains tax. So you now have a situation where people will most likely buy their own home, which is against what I advocate for, which is invest first, invest well, and then make all the gains to be able to buy your own place. So you have more choice. So people are now gonna become mortgage prisoners, which is maybe what the government wants. And then the flip side is if people now have to hold on to properties because they don't wanna pay the taxes, that means it's not a productive economy. You don't have more transactions going through. Some people wanna just downsize, they wanna pay off some of their debt. They can't do that. And if they can't do that, that means someone else can't buy their own home. So you now stop the transactions and that then has a flow on effect to the government who also rely on transactions because they love stamp duty. All of the taxes involved is something they rely on. Another thing that could happen if you have transactions go lower in terms of volumes, you'd have all the people that are involved in that process also start losing jobs. And that is not what the government wants. Now, believe it or not, but in the 1980s, we actually had negative gearing temporarily removed. And what happened was not the desired effect and that's why they reintroduced it again. What happened during that time was that rents actually went up and it didn't benefit the people that it was supposed to benefit. So the theory was that if you remove negative gearing, lower income earners would be able to get into the property market, but the opposite happened. Because in order to buy property, you need to have the deposit and you need to have the capacity to buy. But what we saw is that in the 1980s, when they did go and remove negative gearing, the rents actually went higher. So it meant that people couldn't save enough to be able to purchase the property. And that goes against the entire concept. Now, one of the things that could happen is a grandfathering rule. So it might mean that anyone that's purchased property right now, they might just say, okay, you've got the next 10 years and we won't apply these changes to you. But after a certain date, if you purchase property, you now have these new rules applied to you. This has happened before where they've grandfathered certain rules. And this is why if you are in the best situation to purchase, I don't know why you wouldn't purchase. Because if they do change things, they're most likely gonna have to grandfather a lot of these things anyway. And so that means you might still have CGT tax exemptions uh, all applied to you as a grandfathered rule. You might still have negative gearing benefits for the next five years. And this is why it's so important that you get the right strategy and control what you can control. I know that there were tax laws that were gonna be implemented in Australia and they introduced it in Queensland as a bill that might come through. And because it might come through, people thought it is coming through. And that's a similar way to how people are approaching negative gearing right now. You might be convinced that it's happening, but guess what? Over the last 10 to 15 years, they've tried this multiple times. And in the 1980s, they actually did it and it didn't work out the way they wanted to. So the concluding thoughts I have here is that there is a large percentage of people that might get spooked by this and the chance of them watching this video is probably next to none or even if they did watch it, they probably won't do anything about it. But if you're the select few that actually go and read between the lines of what I'm saying here, it means that there is a massive opportunity because I don't think personally it's gonna happen and even if it does, it probably affects the markets that you're not investing into anyway because you're investing to build wealth, not to reduce taxes. Now, before you go on to say I've got a bias opinion, it'll actually be more beneficial for me and my clients if negative gearing is actually abolished. Because if you think about it, we purchase property in the right locations, most likely within two years are positive cash flow anyway, so the negative gearing doesn't apply to us anyway. And all it will do is it further pushes the rent prices in these locations, which means more passive income, and the more demand comes into this market because people realize they've been investing in the wrong way, means prices go higher anyway. So if I had a personal opinion, for the reason of making wealth, it would be negative gearing should be out and that would be more beneficial to us and that's where the bias would be, but I don't think it's actually gonna happen. I wanna know what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comments down below. I apologize for the long video, but there are so many moving pieces to this puzzle and I just wanted to nerd it out with you guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, smash that subscribe button and if you actually wanna buy property for the right reasons with the right team, we purchased now 80% of our properties off market and the industry average of purchasing property through a BA is probably closer to our eight to 10 weeks, whereas we're doing it in two to three weeks because we have the team, we have the relationships and we have the skills. So if you're interested, reach out to our team ASAP and we'll make that happen. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.